It's December the 26th, 1943, and the Battle of the North Cape is reaching its final conclusion. It would be the last capital ship engagement between Britain and Germany. For two days, a large force of British-led ships have been in hot pursuit of the massive German battlecruiser Scharnhorst, after decoding her plans to attack a convoy on its way to Murmansk. Leading Force One against the Scharnhorst is the Admiral's flagship HMS Belfast, a town-class light cruiser. At the time, she is the largest and most powerful light cruiser in the history of the British fleet. She has 12 6-inch Mark 23 guns, 6 21-inch torpedo tubes, and a main armour belt of 4.5 inches. Their prey is a beast of a battle cruiser. The Scharnhorst is 150 feet longer than HMS Belfast, with three times the displacement, guns almost twice as big, and armour almost three times as thick. Naval warfare has changed. She is one of the last of a dying breed. HMS Belfast and her allies intend to render this endangered species extinct. Well, here we are aboard HMS Belfast, one of the last surviving World War II light cruisers. And what a beautiful evening here on the Thames in London. Quite a change for what it would have been like in the Battle of the North Cape. Oh, can you imagine up there, edge of the world, all of the decks covered in ice, making them deadly ice skating rinks. Over the side, absolutely no chance of being rescued. No, you couldn't do what I'm doing here, for example. Touch bare metal with an ungloved hand and, well, you've lost some skin, if not half a digit. In fact, it was so bad, people come out and they'd hammer the ice off of the gun turrets to free them up. However, if you were up here on the decks during the final hours of that battle, I mean, what a sight that must have been to behold. Now, to imagine you've been chasing the ship through the dark for so long, all you could see were the muzzle flashes from Scharnhorst guns, and all of a sudden, a starburst round is fired, and it illuminates the entire ship in all the glory. That must have been quite a spectacle. The Belfast and her force eventually cripple the swift battlecruiser and manage to catch up to her. Belfast is running on four boilers and four Parson turbine engines, providing 80,000 horsepower and a top speed of 32 knots. Wow, look at the size of this boiler room. And this is just a quarter of the propulsion system aboard HMS Belfast. Now, of course, at action stations, all of the watertight hatches were sealed, so if any of the compartments were compromised, it wouldn't have the impact of sinking the entire ship. Which came in handy in 1941, when Belfast struck a mine and broke her keel. But that's, of course, the engineering side of it. What about the human aspect? I mean, if you were down here and it was compromised, surely there was absolutely no chance of escape. Now, you add to that the heat and the noise, and if the power went out, then you're in complete darkness, and all you get is the vague sounds of battle being transmitted through the hull. Now, of course, there's nothing like the sound of a torpedo scraping the hull to spur you into action. HMS Belfast's advantage over the Scharnhorst is not simply that she has a fully functioning propulsion system. Early in the battle, the Scharnhorst radar was knocked out as well. She is now blinded as well as hobbled. Most importantly, this means that her massive 11-inch guns have no radar-assisted targeting. The Scharnhorst is effectively reduced to firing at muzzle flashes. Meanwhile, the Belfast fully functional 6-inch gun director passes the Scharnhorst position and bearing to the transmission station computer, which feeds necessary gun barrel elevation and training angle to each of the four turrets. This is now truly a battle of David and Goliath. HMS Belfast turrets are complex instruments that required around 50 men to operate. Three of the major components of each turret are the powder handing room, the shell room and the gun house. We're now in the powder handing room, the bottom of turret B, and this area is usually out of bounds to the general public. That's where you take one of these powder charges from the flash tight doors and place them into the hoist. This is all part of a strict fire containment process designed to reduce the chances of a single incoming round vaporizing the entire ship. Of course, a valuable lesson learned at the Battle of Jutland. Now, as well as Belfast having this upgraded armor, there was also the flash doors, which on the other side of there is the magazine, so it separates the magazine from this particular room. Well, as you can see, the powder charge is now on its way up to the gun house. We're now one level up in the shell room. And of course, this is where the projectiles get placed into their own hoist, as we're demonstrating now. And you can see surrounding us, we're actually sat in the middle now of a ring of 50 of these six inch shells. That's uh, one heck of a bandolier. And indeed there's an additional 550 rounds in this one shell room alone. And we can see now the rounds going up 
uh, each of these individual hoists at a rate of around about eight per minute. And the final destination, of course, the gun house. We're here now at the final destination up in the gun house. And here we would have found the crew freezing, dressed in full flash kit for the full two days of the battle, grabbing sleeper cores when and if they could. The rum ration probably would have come in handy. But anyway, around it's delivered from the hoist down onto the loading trays. That is quite a heavy round, and because we've got to get it out again, we're moving to this lighter dummy. The gun is in the horizontal position for loading. So what I'm going to do now is open the breech, and I put the ramming tray, lock it into position. I'm then going to push the projectile, or the round, as far up the barrel as I possibly can with my hand. While well, a bag charge is retrieved from the charge hoist. And we're then going to do the same with the bag charge. Then you ram it. Of course, this would ordinarily be done in seven seconds. But they did have a much bigger crew than just the two of us. Pull the loading tray out of the way. I'm now going to close the breech, make sure it's fully closed and locked in position. And the final thing, just like in tank gunnery, Nick, we take our vent tube, introduce it into the vent tube chamber, make sure it's fully closed. Elevate the gun back to firing position and fire. After receiving a final volley of shells and torpedoes, the flaming battlecruiser Shan Horse brightly lights up the frigid northern night sea. She capsizes, her propellers still turning in the air, as she takes almost all of her complement of 1,960 sailors down with her. From HMS Belfast, Admiral Burnett calls in the final confirmation of kill. Satisfied, Shan Horse sunk. Naval combat would never be the same again. Though the shifting tide of warfare would carry her through an accomplished career, her vital role in the Battle of the North Cape would forever immortalise HMS Belfast in the annals of naval history. <laughs>